If you do not believe in the scriptures, if you do not believe in the Holy Scriptures, this video is not for you. If you do believe in the Holy Scriptures and you hold the scriptures as a final authority, this video is for you. We're going to talk about how to vote. Now, some of you would say, well, you know, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. So therefore, we're not supposed to get involved in all this politics and so on and so forth. First of all, you need to realize the context in which Jesus said that. He was on trial. One of the assumptions was that he was a king trying to displace another king. And, and Jesus is like, no, listen, you need to understand my kingdom is not of this world. Jesus did not say that in the context of voting in a democracy. Actually, he said it is our duty to be salt and light to the nation. Okay, We are supposed to do whatever we can to make sure that our nation is in line with the scriptures, is in line with God's will. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And one of the greatest ways to do that is to vote. God really is interested in politics. Let's get right into this. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 24. This is God speaking here. He said, do not defile yourselves with any of these things. What things? We're going to get back to that. For by all these, the nations are defiled, which I am casting out before you. Okay, so God said this to Moses on his way to the promised land. And on his way to the promised land, they cast out all kinds of nations, okay? This is politics here. We're talking about the throwing down of kings and setting up of new kings, setting up of new kingdom, okay? Verse 25, for the land is defiled. It's possible by sin for the land itself to be defiled. Think about that for a second. For the land is defiled, verse 24. Therefore, I will I visit the punishment of its iniquity upon it. And the land vomits out its inhabitants. That is graphic language and that is very serious politics here. We're not talking about just changes within a nation. We're talking about losing the nation. Verse 26. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments and shall not commit any of these abominations. What abominations? We're going to get back to that. Either any of your own nation or any stranger who dwells among you. That means that this applies to even people who are just visiting the nation. Verse 27, for all these abominations the men of the land have done who were before you and thus the land is defiled. In other words, those nations, those kings, those governments that were before you, the ones that were in power in that land, the ones that you are displacing, the ones that you are conquering and defeating, you are conquering those nations. Those governments and those nations and that society, that culture is falling because of these abominations. Verse 27 again, for all these abominations the men of the land have done who were before you, and thus the land is defiled. 28, lest the land vomit you out also when you defile it, as it vomited out the nations that were before you. This is as serious as it gets when it comes to politics. So let's go back earlier in the chapter to find out what God is talking about. What sins will cause a nation to fall? What sins will cause a culture to fall? What sins will cause governments to fall? Let's go back and find out. So this is Leviticus chapter 18, verse 1. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, I am the Lord your God. According to the doings of the land of Egypt where you dwelt, you shall not do. And according to the doings of the land of Canaan, where I am bringing you, you shall not do. Nor shall you walk in their ordinances, their laws. You shall observe my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk in them. I am the Lord your God. You see, apparently these nations, they had laws set up that were corrupt. They were not in line with the law of God. That was their big problem. Verse 5. 
You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man does, he shall live by them. I am the Lord. None of you shall approach anyone who is near of kin to him to uncover his nakedness. I am the Lord. Now, this is talking about close relatives. And of course, this is talking about sexual intimacy. This is talking about sexual immorality. In fact, all, all of these things that are listed has something to do with sexual immorality. There was a world leader back in the day. I'm not going to mention any names. He's not worthy to even be remembered. However, he said, well, government should not be in the bedroom. It's none of the government's business what happens in the, in the bedroom. Well, according to the scriptures, according to the Holy Scriptures, God says it's all about what happens in the bedroom. And because of immorality in the bedroom, according to the scriptures, it's that that brings the nation down. Let's continue. Verse 7. The nakedness of your father or the nakedness of your mother you shall not uncover. She is your mother. You shall not uncover her nakedness. The nakedness of your father's wife you shall not uncover. It is your father's nakedness. Little side note here. Notice it says that the wife is actually the same flesh as the father. So you, you uncover the, uh, the nakedness of the wife. You're actually uncovering the nakedness of the husband of the wife. Because the husband and the wife are technically one flesh, according to the scriptures. Verse 9. The nakedness of your sister, the daughter of your father, or the daughter of your mother, whether born at home or elsewhere, their nakedness you shall not uncover. Verse 10, the nakedness of your son's daughter or your daughter's daughter, their nakedness you shall not uncover, for theirs is your own nakedness. Verse 11, the nakedness of your father's daughter, begotten by your father, she is your sister, you shall not uncover her nakedness. Verse 12, you shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's sister, she is near of kin to your father. Verse 13, you shall not uncover the nakedness of your mother's sister, for she is near of kin to your mother. Verse 14, you shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's brother. You shall not approach his wife. She is your aunt. Verse 15, you shall not uncover the nakedness of your daughter-in-law. She is your son's wife. You shall not uncover her nakedness. Verse 16, you shall not uncover the nakedness of your brother's wife. It is your brother's nakedness. Verse 17, you shall not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter, nor shall you take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness. They are near of kin to her. It is wickedness. Verse 18, nor shall you take a woman as a rival to her sister to uncover her nakedness while the other is alive. In other words, not to have a wife and her sister at the same time, two wives, both of them being sisters. Verse 19, also you shall not approach a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is in her customary impurity. Now it talks about customary impurity in other parts of the scripture, such as um, when a woman is on her period, when a woman is menstruating, um, and so on and so forth, okay? So that's defined in other parts of Scripture. Verse 20, Moreover, you shall not lie carnally with your neighbor's wife to defile yourself with her. Verse 21, And you shall not let any of your descendants pass through the fire to Molech, nor shall you profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Molech was an ancient statue with the head of a bull and the body of a human being. And the belly, just the womb actually, of that statue would be open. And so people would engage in all kinds of sexually immoral acts and children were conceived. And those children, as soon as the baby would be born, right from there they'd, they'd throw it into the womb of that statue. And in that statue, there would be a fire and the baby would actually be burned, would, would die in the womb of Molech. Molech is a symbol of abortion where the baby is killed in the womb. Now, unfortunately, there are people in this world who claim to have faith in God. Politicians and people who are running to be politicians who say that abortion is okay. And yet, they say they are Christian or Catholic or so on and so forth. They claim to have some kind of faith in God. This here says very clearly 
okay? If you support abortion, you profane the name of the God you claim to believe in. It is blasphemy. Now, there is another very important historical document you should know about when it comes to abortion. It's called the Didache. Let's read it. The Didache. It is the teaching of the 12 apostles, the teaching of the Lord by the 12 apostles to the Gentiles. Now, we're going to go down here to chapter 2, verse 2. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not corrupt boys. I'm just going to pause there for a minute. Keep in mind, this is the teaching of the 12 apostles. This is New Testament teaching. Continuing, thou shalt not commit fornication. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not use witchcraft. Thou shalt not practice sorcery. Thou shalt not procure abortion. Nor shalt thou kill the newborn child. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. It was a Christian teaching right from the very beginning. Remember, that baby inside of you is not your body. It is someone else's body. It is the body of your own child. Verse 22, you shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Verse 23, you shall not mate with any animal to defile yourself with it, nor shall any woman stand before an animal to mate with it. It is perversion. And once again, verse 24, do not defile yourselves with any of these, for by all these the nations are defiled, which I am casting out before you. For the land is defiled. Therefore, I visit the punishment of its iniquity upon it, and the land vomits out its inhabitants. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, either any of your own nation or any stranger who dwells among you. For all these abominations the men of the land have done who were before you, and thus the land is defiled." lest the land vomit you out also when you defile it, as it vomited out the nations that were before you. So if you live in a democracy, it is your duty to vote. And when you vote, keep these things in mind. Find the candidate that best fits this profile. I know in this day and in this age, finding someone who fits that profile perfectly is nearly impossible. So what you have to do then is you have to vote for the least of all the evils. If you have to do it, keep a score. Who scores the highest when it comes to all of these issues as the Holy Scriptures tell us? Again, I know the chances of you finding someone who matches this perfectly is little to none, but still you are to vote for the one who best matches the profile, who best aligns with this. It is your duty as a believer in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And in this day and in this hour, it is most important to get this information out. A lot of people do not know how to vote. They vote for very vain and very stupid reasons, like, why well, I like the looks of that guy. Oh, well, this guy, he said he's going to fix the sidewalks, or he's going to fix the road. Forget the sidewalks and the roads, okay? When a holy God gets angry, as it says in the book of Hebrews, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Like and subscribe right now. And by all means, share this video with your friends and your family. The information needs to get out there.